Yeah, so we uh, at one point had been thinking about trying to schedule talks during this session, but also felt that it might be good just to have some open space for folks to uh, discuss topics that they thought were relevant from the earlier microconference or words not able to come up during that time. Um, so we kind of have it as a, a un, unscheduled or unfocused, I guess. So there's it's kind of whatever folks are feeling like bringing up and discussing. So if we don't have anything, we'll just point to somebody and make them give a talk. So <laughs> like, anything anybody feels like was worth continuing discussion from the uh, microconference? There's not a lot of us, so I can e easily single you out. So. <laughs> John, you've been quiet. I haven't heard much from you during this one. Oh, I've been mostly doing stuff in the hallway, right? Okay, let's, let's, let's give you a, a mic. Yeah, I've mostly been doing stuff in the hallway, right? So after the graphic session we had on, uh, on Wednesday, I've been working with, say, the Qualcomm guys to refine the DMA buff heap stuff. So they presented that as part of the Android track today. So that was revised, and we've continued designing. So we kind of plotted a plan about like adding metadata potentially to DMA buff so you can tag it as it's a protected so like whenever anyone imports a DMA buff they would know it's protected. My proposal is actually that you have this FD2 DMA buff as a new alternative to support metadata so if you give a tagged DMA buff to someone who doesn't know this because they haven't updated their driver it would actually fail importing the DMA buff because it doesn't know how to actually handle the, the metadata that it's present. Because mm -hmm. then you would get away from the problem that was mentioned in, the, in both sessions, I think, about like user space able to crash the system. Yeah, that's a concern. So, yeah. um, <coughs> so one of the things for user space being able to crash the system, the idea is that if we were, user space obviously can't map a restricted buffer. If the buffer is mapped to the hardware, or is requested to be mapped to the hardware. At that point, doesn't seem like the hardware would be able to check the buffer without having to go through. Yeah, so if you say. If it was just straight on. Yeah, so, so the metadata is controlled by the kernel, right? So yeah. the heap that allocated and did the magic would set the flag, right? Okay. So, so if you import it into in the thing, it should actually check the flag and configure whatever they need to do that with their hardware to actually access the buffer in protected mode. Yeah. So that should avoid. So if you say incorrectly give some, let's call it normal buffer, it would basically do the normal as it would reject trying to write to that memory while in protected mode. Okay. Um, sounds all right, but I, you know, submit or TJ. Uh, yeah, so there's a question. So I, I, I want to finish this one little top, but they had, so um, I, I definitely would pull in TJ and uh, submit and other folks on that as well. So. Yeah. Yeah, I know they did. That sounds great, so thanks. Um, so Neil, are you still online and wanting to bring up a question? Yeah, I'm here, I'm here. Okay, sorry. Uh, I just wanted, yeah, hold on, how do I, okay, there we go, buttons. Um, hi, uh, uh, Neil Gompa, I do stuff on the internet on in open source things, whatever. From the Android perspective, I don't think y'all know me all that well. But I was very interested in some of the stuff that you guys talked about in the Android MC um, earlier today and, and a bit of yesterday, particularly around building an AOSP community as well as the, um, the generic bootloader stuff, you know, centering around using UEFI and stuff like that. Um, from the perspective of someone who has previously done work in community AOSP derivatives, as well as you know now operating in Linux distributions and doing things like having Android overlays and building things like that, um, I think it would be really exciting and interesting um, if Android actually does move in those directions of like, from the device perspective, you know, I own a bunch of devices I used to do a lot of stuff with it and put, you know, custom ROMs or whatever, um, encouraging that there is a path for people to use the devices that they have um, for running you know, community builds or aftermarket builds or being able to do development on of AOSP itself. I know that some of the device makers are actually quite good about doing this. Obviously, Pixel, um, and I think a good chunk of the Samsung devices as well, but like 
making this a, a general point of engagement with the larger Android hardware community to do stuff like that and making that available even if it like, for example, cripples protected content support or whatever, whatever makes them feel comfortable with enabling that capability. I think that is a really great thing to do. And I'm also very excited about the generic boot stuff because one of the larger challenges for getting people to be able to do stuff successfully in AOSP is actually just doing the hardware bring up stuff and being able to test and multi-boot and all this other stuff. And in a world where it's possible to say, okay, I can have two builds of Android running on my device and I can switch back and forth and I can see what changes or differences or whatever, um, that is empowering to a very high degree in the same way that when I'm working with regular, when I'm working in Fedora or OpenSUSE on my, on my machines or working on Fedora Sahi Remix, for, for Apple Silicon Max that I can do this kind of thing. So if this is something that you guys, as the Android community and the Android developers upstream at Google do and push for, I think that there's a really strong opportunity to bring together all these factions and fractions of, of Android folks um, back into a larger, stronger, true community engaged uh, project. Um, I hope that that's a goal that y'all want to have, and I just wanted to say my piece about, like, because I wasn't awake when it happened, because I'm over here stateside, and that was, like, three o'clock in the morning. It's like, no way I'm going to be awake for that. But I just wanted to reiterate that I feel that it is extremely valuable and important, and I'm really happy to see that someone, that, that people are starting to care about this within, within the Android, the echelons of the Android developer teams. Um, so, yeah, sorry, this is a little bit babbly and unstructured, but I just wanted to be heard on that, even though, you know, whatever. Chris, did you want to respond? Yeah, yeah. So, 100% uh, that's part of the um, concept that, that I have. Um, I mean, concept sounds a little bit, uh, uh, um, it, it's not a concept, it's, it's a vague idea. But the, the, what I'm, it all comes down to the fact that at the moment, we don't talk to each other. It's got to be better. The more people talk to each other, the more focus there is, um, the better. So that includes the developer communities or the uh, the people working on, I don't know, Lineage OS or uh, the stuff that Vero does uh, with maintaining old hardware. All that stuff is fantastically good. We should encourage that because that's where people um, uh, get their skill set. Um, but also, uh, I, I would spread, um, uh, also look at the, the kind of professional community. So, for the last um, 10 or so years, I've been, I've been addressing the professional community and talking to people working in AOSP and building it into products of all kinds. Um, and in particular, over the last five or six years into automotive, into vehicles. So, again, these are isolated communities and if there was some kind of focus, I kind of feel that they would latch on to it. And that, uh, you know. I 100% agree. Uh, like, uh, one of the things that I struggled with when I was involved in this like 10 or so years ago was that I didn't really have a good place to talk to people. Um, I didn't yeah, have a good place yeah. to get feedback. And I found the process of, in, of working with the Android code extremely difficult um, yep. to the point that I just kind of didn't bother because it was just too hard. Um, and it, it, to be fair, the documentation around that stuff has improved over the years, I suspect, because more and more OEMs and more and more developers who have no idea what the heck they're doing need help. And so that has necessarily improved a fair bit. But it's still really difficult and the requirements are kind of high and, and it's just something that I think does it's going to be one of those longer, long-term, long, large-scale endeavors to to incrementally improve. Um, but like maybe things like having a, a Gen Pop mailing list or a matrix room and a, yeah. and some centralized effort, uh, a GitHub, GitLab, or something where people can actually directly engage with each other and collaborate because it feels like all the and I, 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 it feels like all the current avenues don't are, are either partially closed or ignored, 
or your like the community hobbyists as well as the external professionals that are not part of the core OHA, um, they tend to be ignored, which I feel is a detriment to the larger Android, the success of the Android um, community in evolving the technology. Exactly. We will not be ignored. Yes. Right. I mean, uh, like doing doing Wadroid stuff in Fedora has made it really clear to me that this is still a problem. That this is this is a problem that needs to to be improved. It is. It is. Uh, that and needs to be dealt with in some way. I, I don't. To, I don't want to go on uh, too much length of this, but I, it comes down really to. I mean, the, the pieces are all there. Uh, it's really. Uh, at least in, in, at the first iteration, it's just a question of joining the pieces together. So this is stuff that I do. This is stuff that um, uh, the Android developer, sorry, AOSP developer community does. This stuff that Lenaro do. If that were somehow integrated into a single entity, that would be a great thing. And if we could do more meetups like this uh, at other conferences, so I'm thinking maybe FOSDEM in, in, uh, in Brussels would be a good place to do this. Maybe somewhere in the USA. And scale in the North America. That Scale would maybe would be a good place to. Yeah, are you are you volunteering? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I, I I don't know if I I would consider myself plugged in enough to the Android world to be yeah. able to be successful in this. But, it, but like it could be. I, I right I go to scale on a regular basis, so I could I would definitely swing by at least. It would be a great forum to do that kind of thing. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, this yeah. kind of thing that that that's 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 the extent of my vision, to be honest. <laughs> and. To your point about the bootloaders, that's another area where I'm, I'm personally excited just from past history working on some of the dev boards and that aspect of yeah, yeah. kind of keeping things continually updated. Just when you've getting the damn a, thing to boot is, is well, even, a huge problem. Yeah, I mean, when you get a board that is usually a SOC generation behind or something like that, the bootloader's a little older and uh, keeping that up to date with AOSP was always a big challenge. And so, I'm, yeah, it's, it's an area that I'm really excited to have. Moving forward, anybody else have? Honestly, I think that piece. I think that piece will just make the community feel way more heard than anything else. Like fixing the the boot boot up sequence stuff and having the generic bootloader is going to make people lots and lots of people very happy. It's exciting. <laughs> All right, so we're about fifteen minutes in. Is there any other topics that folks want to bring up and discuss? Daryl. You want to come up or yeah. grab the mic? I'm sorry. So one thing I think we can do on the technical side to help uh, make it a bit easier for people to get into it is uh, make things a little bit more modular. For example, um, I've been trying to build a non-Android Linux system on top of Bionic for, for some experimentation. And uh, it turns out that in order to even build Bionic, you have to pull in about uh, two gigabytes worth of source code, because uh, even something as basic as Ellipse has dependencies on the archive manager and stuff, because it needs to look into fi uh, files and stuff. So, so one thing I'll pl so I know uh, uh, Roman Sternko at uh, Glodroid um, has a project that he's used for some of the CI that's done for the DRM hardware composer on the free desktop uh, uh, GitLab, where basically in that kind of very limited free desktop, you know, GitLab CI, they don't have a lot of CPU time. So doing things like just build validation as part of the CI is, would be really difficult to do with all of AOSP. And so he has a, a, a project that kind of pulls enough headers and stubs from AOSP to kind of allow you to build that one project separate. Um, and so you might want to take a look at that. I mean, it's one of those things where, you know, it's, it's only used in, I think it's used in Glowdroid more. I, I don't know a lot of the details there, but um, the, uh, the DRM hard, hardware composer uses it for its, you know, uh, upstream CI, basically, so. That is certainly a good start and we, uh, we should try getting at least some support for this upstream. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I think finding a way to do it kind of in the community might also be a, 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 a helpful uh, route, so. Anything else? Amit. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. 
So I have discussed this one in the hallway with some of you already, and this is not the narrow specific. So my interest is in doing ARM64 native builds of AOSP. So if someone is interested in you know, collaborating on that, so this is not a narrow thing at all. I mean, so it will be my what? little pet project in the background, maybe. Weren't there some outstanding patches that you all had seen? I have not even started yet, sorry. Okay. <laughs> so, but I, I want to look into it at some point. Okay. And somebody, Lenar, had submitted some patches that were needed for oh, some portions of that. Oh, okay, just CTS and VTS, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other one is uh, AOSP on desktops. So <laughs> last week I read the multi-window support, and then I realized that can I use it, can I run AOSP on my laptop? I know Android x86 existed a long time ago. Uh, I have run that, I have tried that. It, it worked fine at that time, but now I want to start again. And again, this is from x -Elite point of view, the new Snapdragon chipset point of view. So it could be x86 as well, it could be RISC-V as well, but uh, again, something which if anyone is interested in, again, non Linaro stuff, because we are busy with other thing, but if someone wants to collaborate on that. Again, something which I have not started yet. So AOSP on desktop, meaning you want to bring up AOSP on desktop? On laptops, yes. I see. Okay. I think bring up is fairly doable, actually using it actually using it as a laptop or desktop OS. Okay. So you need a lot of laptop drivers then. Just, then you need to support all the drivers for laptops and... Uh. So I will start with the generic Linux distro uh, and start, PC, uh, start adding the pieces. Uh, so we have experience of running mainline Linux without Android patch set. Uh, AOSP on mainline Linux. So we know that, uh, you know, we can run AOSP with just plain vanilla uh, Linux kernel if you have the... <laughs> uh, no, I mean, so the features which I'm interested in, the yeah. desktop thing, right? Wi-Fi, Bluetooth... You still need Ash, man. <laughs> MemFD, I'm okay with MemFD. Oh, okay, yeah, I guess you can do the global switch on that. Yeah, so. I can do MemFD and... Uh, yeah. So... Uh, can I it's what we did for WayDroid on Fedora. Like, we, we don't have AshMem. We just have BinderFS, and we have the Lineage OS build set up so that it uses the MemFD thing instead. Seems to be fine so far. Can I ask a question on AshMem since AshMem? Oh, go ahead. Is, yeah. So I'm okay with MashMem and the uh, AshMem as a base and MemFD as the optional feature which you can enable. Uh, can we enable it uh, in a non, -pro I won't say production devices, but as a secure SE Linux enforcing mode? So, Should we start looking into that? Um, I, I, it's something I'd, I would be excited to see progress on. It's one of those things that's been on my to-do list for a long time. Um, there's, you know, as far as um, there's been, you know, the, the, the last kind of blocker for it is the compatibility on MemFD for Ashman MyOctals because tasks that currently can't access Dev Ashman directly, like that's already been locked down, but they may receive an FD that they assume is an Ashman FD. And so it's actually a MemFD, and so they then call iOctal with Ashman iOctals on it and they'll get errors. And so we need this little bit of compatibility on MemFD, I think, before we can make that switch. Um, but, so that's been kind of outstanding for a while. I had a really test patch, um, you know, there, some folks have been looking at it, but. Yeah, know. sorry, that was on us. No, no, no. We were, we were supposed to test that, um, yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, so, that, you know, I think 
the deprecation is still something we'd like to see for Ashmem, but it, it's... But I've seen the patches rewriting the Ashmem driver in Rust now. So, yeah, I mean, here's, this is kind of, I, I feel it's my own responsibility. So I, I've not managed to deprecate Ashmem yet, and so it's still there. And meanwhile, we still need to carry it in the Android tree for s support, you know, ac across the board. And so the rewriting it in Rust allows us to have kind of a safer driver in that interim time period. So it is, it is one of those things where I still so, want to see that deprecated Alice has been doing some really cool work, getting a lot of Rust stuff going. Um, so yeah, I, it's- So uh, I'm going to ask a dumb question here. Uh, why aren't you deprecating it without removing it? Like deprecation doesn't mean removal. Why don't you just go ahead and say it's deprecated and tell everyone to buzz off on using it? Well, we, we still need the support for this ioctal. So basically the- No, supporting the ioctal, supporting, supporting it is one thing and keeping it around is one thing, but telling people to stop adding more use to it is important before you even get to the point of yes, getting so rid of it. So like, why not declare it deprecated now and just call it a day? Well, so we have already well, deprecated is not removal. I guess so. Uh, the, the, we've already removed it from being accessible, so it is already in a way deprecated. But these compatibility, especially for existing binaries, has to be preserved, and so we have to maintain it at the moment. Yeah. So why don't you just go ahead and formally actually say it is deprecated, and start telling people that start looking at fixing your stuff to not use it because otherwise this problem just keeps dragging on and on. I remember the first time that I heard you guys talking about getting rid of this in, what was it, 2018? We're now into 2024, so. It, it was probably earlier, but. <laughs> like, was, um, hey, I'm being, I'm being generous here. Yes, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, no, it's it's a long running issue. Um, I know uh, Joel, who isn't in the room, but at the conference here, uh, did a lot of work to get that MemFD infrastructure in place and uh, getting that last couple steps to switch over to it. I think is, is something we want to see done. So, but you know, can't say any particular timeline. Uh, I have an observation. So I did attend a couple of talks uh, related to boot time optimizations. And uh, so it looks like some of the uh, experiments which we do in Android ecosystem using Perfetto tracing, right? Um, so using Perfetto configs and Perfetto tracing, uh, it looks like most people are not familiar with it outside of the Android. Um, like for instance, they brought up some of the known things which we do day in and day out. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, it'll be good to see, uh, I think I did discuss this with you offline a few months back. It'll be good to see how we can um, uh, have this learning from Android Perfetto to the uh, holistic ecosystem. Yeah, no, um, I've, I've been definitely hyping up Perfetto and bothering various scheduler maintainers and things like that to try it out. Um, so yeah, it, it's one of those things where definitely inside of the Android ecosystem, it's just such a useful tool and it's able to yeah. communicate, you know, problems in just very simple visual ways. Because even if when I showed some of the traces, uh, it's, they don't really uh, correlate to understand. It takes time to actually understand, right? Yeah. Oh, I mean, there's so much you can do with Perfetto. Exactly. Like I, I, I only know a little teeny bit, even so me, I have a lot to learn, me too. But so. even for me to uh, make them understand what exactly it is, it's tough to, uh, it's tough to correlate until, until the other folks also have worked on it. Yeah. Um, so, so I think uh, it'll be good as we in Android to have more uh, uh, learning or some kind of a developer blog or uh, use yep. some of these micro conferences to use, show some of the use cases. That will be helpful. So I know I've, I've got a gist on GitHub that kind of walks somebody through how to yep. use Perfetto on a bog standard upstream kernel um, and just on a normal Linux distro or Linux, you know, classical Linux distro. Um, and then uh, uh, I've been trying to share that a little bit. I know Servana, I guess, linked to it in his presentation um, uh, at the. Uh, Power uh, microconference. Um, 
I'm continuing to try to hype it as much as I can. I can put it in the notes. I can do it. Like, just let me know. I'm, I'm definitely eager to get more people to use it um, because it is such a, a really cool, powerful yeah. tool. I have a demo if people want to see later. I can walk you through a cool little step. Yeah, I think, I think I we should, uh, in retrospect, I think we should have had some kind of a tech talk from Android side on the tracing, uh, tracing track. That would have been uh, I, good. I had, I had invited some people to do so, and they just had too much going on I see. at the time. Yeah, before, I mean, so. I, I thought I, sh I could have done that, my talk on one of those tracks after going visiting there. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's one of the observations I had. Yeah, no, I, yeah, yeah, I definitely you know, won't want to spread the religion of Perfetto. So it's like, go ahead. Yeah, great idea, perfetto. So, yeah, show me the code. Make a package. Uh, it, the nice part about it is so there's already packages that are on GitHub that are, you can download. Um, you don't have to build it yourself. Okay. Uh, and then the rest of it is all at perfetto.dev. Uh, I, perfetto. I, I can't read. I think it's perfetto.dev. So yeah. So. And is there a Yocto package for it? Um, so there's, uh, there's x86 and ARM binaries. Mm, I want to build so, it from source. Maybe not Yocto. So, I mean, it is open source, but there's pre-built binaries. Um, I don't know about if it's being pulled into Yocto. I don't know what you need to do to integrate something into Yocto. But it, it's, it's a public project. <clears throat> um, yeah, I, what I'm saying is, I, 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 if, if you want people to use it, make it easy for people to use. Uh, in, uh, engage with the community. Talk to the Yocto people. Talk to whoever. Okay. And say, hey, do you? Have yeah, you thought I of using this thing? I'm, I'm saying this is on you. No, it's, it's, I think all of us can do that. Yeah, well, the yeah, other part yeah. Is, yeah. What's no, on all of us? No, yeah, I, get, I, I, I can see the point. And, and and presentation uh, pushing for Pepero earlier this weekend. I think Anna, Anna Lena Marks did a really good uh, talk on that. Yeah, really? yeah, yeah that, that's what I'm referring to. Yeah, there was a, a push to use Perfetto yeah. so, within the Yocto community. Okay. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not very familiar with Yocto, so that's a gap on my side. Um, you know, I've been mostly focused on trying to get it on spots where kernel maintainers are focused, So, because I feel like it's a really good tool for the scheduler stuff initially. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think it's a, a good gap to fill. <laughs> so. Perfetto is also in the process of being packaged in Fedora, and so it should be available in Fedora and Apple in the fairly soon as, as, awesome. as the package review gets completed and things like that. Yeah, that so would be great. if you're using CentOS, RHEL, or Fedora, then you should be able to get it fairly easily soon. Have you had much experience using it in those environments out of curiosity? I've only started kind of using it. I've done it the bad ways before, before Perfetto. So like I'm just, um, it is uh, definitely an improvement on how to do, how to do this without, uh, rather than doing it by hand. Um, so. Uh, we'll see how it uh, we'll see how it goes. Like I would like to see like in Fedora, there's been a general trend towards trying to enable real time tracing, profiling, performance improvements, and stack and the stack analysis, all these other things. So we're starting to pull in all these tools to make it easier for people to do this development. You know, the kernel level, at the desktop level, at the server architectures, all this stuff, stuff that you know has typically only existed on other operating platforms or in specialized cases like in Kubernetes with the Jaeger and Open Tracing with the Go stuff, uh, we're trying to make this more broadly available ac across the board. And so, um, you know, we want to make Fedora a good development environment for those sorts of things and for people to be interested in that kind of um, that part of the application development cycle, right? Like performance is important. Yeah, that's great. Uh, the, I know uh, the Perfetto team is super responsive to a lot of issues around trying to kind of broaden it out. So it, it's one of those things where definitely, um, it, as you work with things and integrate, if you, if you need contacts, please uh, reach out. Um, happy to try to introduce. Oh, for sure. I will definitely reach out as needed. Thanks. Anything else that folks want to bring up? Got actually, we're getting close to time. We got ten minutes now. So, <laughs> how, how will we squeeze it all in? <laughs> go ahead. Okay, I'll take one. Or no, or, oh, go ahead and we'll... 
Okay, um, so the favorite topic that for these kind of things is, um, what about risk five? Is it was in the, uh, the, the CI chain for a while and then it got removed. Um, I, I know nothing about this apart from, from that. Anybody have any, any comments, any thoughts? Is RISC five even worth doing? What, what is the, what's the feeling of the room? Feeling of the room, I guess. <laughs> we take the temperature on that one or is that? Well, RISC five is still a mess, so there's always that. <laughs> yeah, which is really, the reason. <laughs> um, so, so there are. There's a lot of interest. There's a lot of things happening. We do have Risk Five works with with AOSP and and there's projects with very distant uh, uh, release dates, and so we're just not close enough and is not mature enough with our partner community yet to to have it kind of be real in there, but support, support for it's there. The kernel work that you're, you, you observed there was some kernel stuff that came in and then went out and really what was happening is we, we didn't have anybody really maintaining it. It was sort of like flung in with thinking that, we, that it wasn't just a fly by night uh, submittal, but it was. And so, but, but Kernel work is still being done. It's being done by Sci-5 and Revos and, and stuff. So it's not dead. It's just that first submittal set of submittals was premature. Um, but there are folks using AOSP with with uh, Risk Five. It's it's alive and it's yeah. there's going to be products. Just don't know when. A lot of stuff around you know agreeing on the right extensions and things like that yeah. is taking time and finding hardware that has the extensions that people agree on is another, like, you know, it, it gets to be slow. Amit, you had something? Uh, so this one is on the dev boards for Android project, which we discussed in last LPC as well. So we were having discussion in the hallway and over the emails regarding the hosting of this project. So since there are no topics left. Yeah, I thought no, that we can just... Do you want to come up here and do it? No, no I can. No, okay. I mean, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I proposed uh, hosting it on GitHub in my ELC talk. Uh, Kevin, I think, was okay with that. Uh, Chris has a few more suggestions uh, we can discuss if there is interest in that topic. Go for it. Yeah, <laughs> go for yeah. it. So for us, uh, we, so right now it is hosted. So this project is uh, a community of dev boards uh, and AOSP system developers outside of AOSP. So the people who maintain or run AOSP on their respective dev boards, or it could be devices, it could be the Cyanogen mod style phones, it could be anything. So right now, so we started this project uh, last year. We ho right now it is hosted on dev boards for android.linaro.org. Uh, but the concern on uh, the hosting is that Linaro is usually associated with ARM architecture. So which is, I mean, we are okay with that. So, uh, but to maintain the vendor neutrality, should uh, it be moved to a more neutral place? And if it is, then where? Uh, okay, so yeah, it should be vendor neutral. The whole uh, idea of this should be vendor neutral. So not Linaro.org, not BayLibra.com or whatever. Um, so my suggestion is why not use AOSP developers community dot whatever it might be. Um, since it's a domain that's out there, people know of, of it. And it, it is, as I understand it, it's basically uh, a, 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 a document which has pointers to other things. It doesn't actually have to host the code itself. It just has to be a central point where people can go to. We say, hey, go to this point, go to the devices pages, da da da. There you'll find support for Qualcomm, for TI chips, for MediaTek chips, whatever else is out there. So I think if I understood the purpose of the uh, Dev boards for ASP project was that it is a little more opinionated and kind of organized okay. than the loose collection of 
pointers to howls and things. Well, no, no, I, I, I agree. So yeah. it's not just a question of, oh, here's a, a, um, a repo which, which we, we tested once and it worked. So it has to be legit. There has to be some, uh, some support behind this. Um, there should ideally be some CI chain here. There should be some test results and whatever. It should be legit. It should be ups as upstreamable as well. It should be in a state where it could be upstream to to AOSP if that was. I'm not. I'm not expressing this particularly well. It should be of the same quality as as the stuff we have in AOSP. Is what I'm trying to say, but not in the devices directory from AOSP. Because I'm, I'm getting the feeling that the devices directory in AOSP is basically frozen, except for the Pixel devices, and I'm fine with that. I, I don't have an issue with that. I, I think in many ways that's the wrong place to put stuff. So I wouldn't say frozen. I think it's mostly the. I, the things that we want to be concerned about is making sure that the boards that we do have in there are well supported. Yeah. And are kind of keeping currency. But frozen in terms of putting new boards in there. There's no, as I understand it, no appetite for putting new boards in there. And if you did, where would you stop? I'm, you could even ask the question, why is it those particular bunch of boards? Because it's a fairly random bunch of boards, to be honest. Um, in those cases, I mean, I think it's because we've had commitments from yeah. folks who are working on those boards and keeping them current. And so that, that's, uh, you know, I, but, I wouldn't say that it, we are closed to new boards in that space. But I think it's also very difficult to get the level of commitment to support them. It kind that, of would. That level of commitment is not documented anymore. Like, what, what does that mean? What, what are yeah. the <laughs> That's, I, yeah, I, I'm Also, not, like, like, you know, also, why isn't the stuff like going towards the upstream generic enablement in mainline Linux and things like that? Like, most of the, the enablement for these boards are not actually specific to AOSP in themselves. It's drivers and device trees and weird little bibbly bottles to make stuff like at least, come up. At least for a number of the boards that are in there, they are pretty upstream aligned. Um, yeah, I think there's two categories of things here. The boards that are not mainline is a, or the yeah. kernel support for boards that are not mainline is a, is a yet a different level, but for boards that actually have mainline support, like what the criteria is that they would be then accepted into the upstream AOSP sources is not yeah. defined anywhere, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and I, well, yeah. I think the, they, they require some yeah. discussions and negotiations, yeah. I think, to, to, to feel out the specifics. But on, And on a related topic, in speaking of testing, I, I was wondering if there's a, in terms of, um, like, kernel CI running Android common kernel type stuff, is there some, is there, one thing we're not doing is running CTS VTS on these types of upcream, is, and we probably shouldn't because that's not a final product, but is there some subset of CTS VTS that might be defined as some, we could break out as a smaller test suite that we could run on Android common kernel in, um, in kernel CI on some of these boards that actually have AOSP support? Like, is there some sort of thing there we could do in terms of testing that might help establish that? Another set, like you were saying, what's the acceptable level of criteria that, that we could have, yeah. So do, maybe can I have you send me an email on that? Because yeah. we, you know, in, oh, go We've been talking, so we do, AOSP kernels are all in kernel CI right now with minimal, minimal actual testing. So right now the way we use kernel CI is to make, is really a kernel hygiene check to make sure we haven't broken all the other kinds of builds and that people who are downstream of us using it for non-Android things, we're not breaking them. That's how we've been using it now. but. We've been talking a lot with Gustavo and, and the others on the Kernel CI team in the last few months and then here uh, this week about doing some of the kinds of things you're talking about. But right now, while they're in the middle of going to their new architecture and bringing up a lot of stuff, getting Android support and, and stuff to run Android workloads and boot Android things is, they really want to do it, but it's, it's kind of uh, off the off the plate for probably this year, maybe the next year, and so 
the conversations have been more around what kind of testing can we do with these kernels that would be meaningful testing. So if you talk about a subset of VTS, there's the LTP suite and the K self-test suite. Certainly we could be running those. Um, and there's probably a bunch of others who've talked yeah. to them about, you know, maybe running some performance workloads looking for regressions, that sort of thing. Yeah. And so, yeah, there, there, there's some work internally that runs tests. So trying to line up which ones are expected versus not expected to pass on the, you know, pre-LTS kernels uh, would be something to sync on. But I, I'm happy to try to make that connection. So. Anything else on the dev boards? So as far as the, on the, was your questions, I guess, answered? So if I <clears throat> understood the discussion correctly, then GitHub it is, or? Is that sufficient for the actual code hosting that you want to do? So the code hosting, everyone is, so all the board support vendors are doing it separately. Bailey is doing it separately. Okay. Linaro is doing separately. Okay. If there are common hells, which we are, we are right. working together, then we can host it on the same GitHub project. Uh, I would okay. assume. Yeah, I, I just, I, mostly I, I, I'd had some sense that the project was using Garrett and was trying to kind of be a full stack, and so I just didn't know exactly how distributed that was. So, yeah, when we started talking about dev boards for Android, there were two reasons. One was the, um, trustability and uh, testability of devices that support ASP and how can it be shown and proven, that was one. The other was to encourage newer developers that work with ASP to sort of be familiarized, get familiarized with uh, how ASP functions in terms of how you, uh, you know, push patches, et cetera. And that's why we went with a Garrett instance of our own. Dot .linaro.org was just, I've explained to a few, it was incidental because we had the, uh, we had to work with our IT help folks. Mm -hmm. And we are not very big, so. But yeah, for now what we will do is we will um, use the GitHub community page for consolidating everything. Mm -hmm. And we will let everyone use whatever storage and hosting they want to use. And for us, we will do dev boards for Android because it makes sense. We have the setup already. Yeah, cool. And uh, anyone who wants to probably experience how to submit patches, or uh, we can help with, you know, get it submissions and plus twos and all, all of that uh, workflow. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're at time. We're past time. Thanks so much, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay. appreciate it, and uh, hopefully see everybody next year. Absolutely. Let's do it again. Yeah. <laughs>